So hi and welcome to the Firefly Adda uh, virtual conversation starter, a platform which uh, promotes uh, you know thought leadership content, content which actually is thought provoking, deep insights, deep learning, especially during these times when you know everybody's sort of locked down. So this is a perfect platform to bring forward thought leaders who actually you know uh, come from different walks of life. In today's episode, uh, I'm really excited to have uh, you know one of my close acquaintances and friends uh, abhishek abhishek shivram uh, one of the uh, one of the one of the few people who i actually really know who actually understands cricket to the level of t uh, who's really passionate about the game and understands the game like all of us really do i mean but beyond that as well so uh, to begin with uh, uh, let's first of all welcome abhishek abhishek welcome to the firefly adda Thank you so much, uh, Kushagra, for having me here. Uh, it's really an honor to be here. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Abhishek. So um, uh, it's a given that the first question will be around, uh, you know, uh, cricket. Like uh, everybody, really, you know, uh, loves cricket. Cricket is like a religion in India. Everybody follows cricket, and they're really passionate about this game. Uh, and these twenty minutes is actually, uh, you know, um, a very, very less time in terms of, you know, talking about the game. It it would actually take a lifetime to, you know, talk about cricket. But to begin with, the uh, first and the most important question that everybody has in their mind is about. Uh, the indian team and especially the 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 most cherished sort of player within the team which is uh, mahendra singh dhoni and i actually keep seeing a lot of your uh, you know uh, comments and blogs where you actually speak about uh, you know how dhoni's future actually looks like so would you want to quickly maybe you know sort of comment on that and you know talk about uh, it from your perspective on as to you know what uh, uh, mahendra singh dhoni is actually thinking at this given moment um i'm really glad that you started off on a very auspicious note uh, talking <laughs> about um, mahendra singh dhoni yeah. he has literally been at least for guys like us the blue eyed boy so yeah. um, of course uh, with a very heavy heart though i must uh, say that uh, i think uh, we have probably seen the last of dhoni in international cricket uh, that is my take on it uh, because uh, knowing the kind of guy he is uh, the way he bed, uh, uh, you know bids uh, farewell to uh, uh international cricket is uh, on his own terms and i think uh, uh uh silence speaks a lot so uh, he has taken uh, he has probably faded off into the oblivion but like uh, we never know he is an enigma and uh, he might probably uh you know uh, uh, throw a bolt from the blue and uh, maybe come and play another tournament or so but yes we'll definitely get to see him in the league uh, uh, in the league tournaments like the ipl and other uh, you know uh, cricketing leagues across uh, but um, i think international cricket according to me uh, 70% he is uh, he's probably yeah he's probably left us uh, that's actually really sad to hear but we need to really embrace the reality and you know uh, take things into perspective at in our strides and you know look at the future generation of cricket and i'm pretty sure uh, we are in great hands with uh, virat kohli so that brings me to another question so what is your take on virat kohli and how is he going to take the indian team to uh, maybe the next level so maybe are we looking at winning a world cup under him um in all possibility yes because uh, the kind of uh, maturity that he has shown none of us actually gave him a chance uh, when he took over uh, the mantle uh, as the captain because we always thought he was this uh, in your face kind of a cricketer who could not uh, you know tame his horses um, and uh, he was that that kind of an aggressive uh, personality uh, but uh, having said that the way he has handled himself the way he has uh, um, the the way the transition has happened from dhoni to uh, virat kohli has been spectacular mind blowing and i think uh, very heartening to see for a cricket fan and i'm sure definitely i mean uh, we will probably be in for a uh, you know a surprise uh, Oh, it's not a surprise anymore. I think we could win the next World Cup. <laughs> Absolutely, fingers crossed. And I'm actually a big fan of his, so you know, really looking forward to that. So, anyways, coming to our topic, so sports psychology. So that's the topic that we're actually going to you know talk about, and uh, the audience here would be really keen and interested to understand, um, you know, what sports psychology really actually means, uh, and you know, 
from an Indian context, you know, per se, because that's not something which uh, is, you know, uh, spoken very aggressively, uh, you know, in the Indian, you know, sports circles, even though it's sort of, you know, picking up uh, lately, but maybe, you know, if you would want to maybe throw some light on around what sports psychology really is and how it actually plays a part in the Indian sporting ecosystem. Right. Uh, sports psychology is also known as mental conditioning uh, in uh, common parlance. Um, and uh, uh, and this, this could apply to anybody. Uh, it could be a student who goes to school or college. It could be for a homemaker. It could be for uh, the corporate professional, uh, particularly, uh, you know, I mean, all, uh, people who face stress on a day to day basis, uh, they could definitely take a leaf out of successful sportsmen's books and uh, see what they did right, what they did wrong, how they went about their trade, um, because sport in itself is uh, a great leveler, and uh, it teaches you how to accept defeat very gracefully, and um, you know it, it helps you to uh, treat winning and losing in the same breath. And I don't think there's a bigger teacher than sport in itself. Uh, like Rahul Dravid had uh, once mentioned, uh, he constantly keeps harping over this fact that he has been uh, more of a failure than a success uh, because he, he says he has played about 600 uh, odd, 650, close to 650 international games. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has uh, crossed the 50 run mark. He says if 50 is considered to be a success, uh, uh, you know, the, the number for success uh, for a batsman, then uh, he has probably crossed it about 200, 250 times, which is about 30% conversion. Uh, so which means he, he goes about to say that 70% of the times uh, he has actually failed. Wow. Uh, so it, it keeps you, it keeps you uh, very humble. It, it, it teaches you that uh, you know, you can't take anything for granted. Nothing is permanent. So whenever you fall, you've got to come back strong. Uh, you, uh, and yeah, so sports psychology, that basically is the crux. And there is a lot to it. I have uh, plenty of modules that I've designed as well on sports psychology and mental conditioning. Uh, um, so another one of it uh, to uh, go ahead and let our uh, viewers know is something called being in the zone, which is extremely important especially for uh, people like us uh, uh, who have to be uh, on top of our game uh, in the corporate scenario, right? Uh, you've got to be in the zone. And to be in the zone, you've got to do certain things, right? It starts from preparedness and it goes to uh, a few levels after that. Um, and, and then, you know, uh, eventually you enter the zone. So all these things and more is what is covered in sports psychology. And uh, <clears throat> going forward, maybe uh, we could discuss that as well. Uh, in subsequent episodes. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so it brings me to a very interesting, you know, question uh, around this. So shouldn't this be inculcated, uh, you know, in the educational system, uh, you know, within the uh, Indian scheme of things? Because I think if we actually sort of inculcate that right from the onset within, you know, the education systems and, you know, actually give exposure to our children around, uh, you know, this uh, particular field, I think that will actually make them, uh, you know, mentally uh, a whole bit stronger and actually, you know, give them... Uh, uh, the focus and that strength, you know, to actually face any sort of adversities or challenges. Isn't that the case? You hit the nail on the head. Uh, unfortunately, it hasn't been uh, practiced to a great extent, uh, though a lot of uh, schools have started uh, developing sport. Um, they haven't uh, paid too much attention to sports psychology. So, and, and I think that that happens with a lot of households in a lot of households as well, where, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, the, the, the rat race is, uh, is such that, that there's so much of pressure in succeeding mm -hmm. that uh, the importance of failure is somewhere lost, the essence mm -hmm. of failure. Um, we as kids, uh, when we used to even play gully cricket mm -hmm. or uh, a game of whatever, Lagori or whatever mm -hmm. that. Uh, yeah. We have seen so many, uh, so many defeats, uh, yeah. right? I mean, um, <clears throat> and that is something which has to be uh, inculcated in, uh, in children at a very, very grassroots level because of which sports psychology should be made a subject. And also encourage students to play as many sport as poss sports as possible. Um, they don't necessarily have to be, uh, they don't necessarily have to stick to one particular sport. If you saw Rahul Dravid played three sports for school. Um, A.B. De Villiers, I think, has played about 150 sports, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. he, uh, he has represented South Africa in a whole lot of them as well. So yeah. uh, a good sportsman, uh, uh, you know, 
practically uh, takes like duck to water to any sport mm -hmm. uh, and once you do that uh, you uh, you you begin to gather the essence of uh, winning and losing and how to handle uh, success and failure so yes kids need to be encouraged to play sport and also be taught sports psychology at a grassroots level yeah so brings me to a very very important question and very relevant to the times that we're living in unforeseen circumstances with the pandemic you know and uh, hovering around us so there would be a lot of uh, you know sportsmen and you know budding uh, you know sports sportsmen who actually you know want to you know go out there and you know get out on the ground and you know play but they don't really uh, have the opportunity at this given moment because of the lockdown situation so do you actually have some sort of uh, you know best practice framework or any sort of you know tips that you can actually sort of offer to such people who are actually sort of locked down and who can actually utilize this lockdown time to sort of you know hone the skills better in any way um see i i i don't particularly have a tip as such but mm -hmm. um having said that uh my son who is six and a half mm -hmm. right uh, his energy levels are so high and he is not a sportsman i mean he doesn't know he doesn't know uh, you know the 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 a b c d of any particular sport mm -hmm. uh, he just loves to play mm -hmm. and to tame his energy down uh, it takes a lot so you can imagine a person who has played sport for 10 years 15 years of his life uh, locking him down and not allowing him to go out there and play a sport it's going to take a toll um first thing i would uh, advise to anybody in such a scenario is first of all calm your mind uh, because uh, there is only that much that you can do out of this uh, particular situation you can't do much but having said that you could uh, do various other things for instance the other day i was playing table cricket with my son i think wow I remember the kids we used to play the uh, table cricket uh, um, i mean uh, brought back a lot of memories yeah. uh, so stuff like that 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 also uh, could uh, you know bring the winning and losing factor so you could play table cricket with uh, whoever is at home and then uh, you know take it to a competitive level yeah. you could play chess you could play chess is a full fledged sport yeah. um or any any indoor sport or uh, or if he's a cricketer uh, he could just do wall practice and uh, you know um, get over that he could he could do a little bit of dribbling if he's a footballer mm -hmm. or a hockey player indoors that that generally takes your mind off uh, but yes uh, having said that this particular situation is something that is out of control so we can't do much we got to work within our uh, limitations and uh, try to bring the best out of um, what we have Absolutely. So uh, now I was actually going through, uh, you know, I, I believe you're actually writing a book or you almost, you know, sort of, uh, you know, uh, completed uh, writing a book, which is, you know, soon to be, you know, released. Uh, you know, our audience would be really keen and interested to know what this book is all about. I, I believe it's about uh, cricket and uh, leadership, you know, tied together. Uh, so our audience here would be really interested to you know uh, know about what this book is really all about and what can what what are the key takeaways you know that you know they can actually you know get from this book um yeah the book is called out of the park mm -hmm. um we had a lot of uh, uh, a lot of pondering over to do um, mm -hmm. the title particularly uh, and then uh, we came up with this uh, title called out of the park because uh, it adds a little bit of zing to the entire uh, yeah. uh, the entire it, it it isn't very mundane yeah. though the uh, uh, yeah though the messaging in the book is uh, 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 is is basically sports psychology uh, which is my uh, which is my uh, specialty uh, i do this through the storytelling of successful sportsmen uh, so there are 30 chapters uh, and they're very anecdotal mm -hmm. uh, the uh, each chapter covers a very very vital attribute um so there are attributes uh, uh, a couple of them to name is uh, to unleash the leader from within mm -hmm. uh, leader is uh, is something which all of us seek for uh, being uh, uh, corporate professionals um you know uh, to to guide our team so you you could probably lead a team of 5 or 10 or even 100 people uh, you got to be a good leader and to be a good leader you also have to back your instincts uh, right so um, and and to back your instincts you need to be a very very calculated gambler mm -hmm. uh, so stuff like these um, are uh, are uh, present in the book which i um, which i communicate to my audience through um, sto the storytelling of people like uh, like 
to successful leaders like Steve Waugh, like Mahindra Singh Dhoni, Saurabh mm-hmm. Ganguly. Mm-hmm. Um, because uh, I haven't, I very, very consciously not mentioned anybody in the pre-1990s era because I haven't followed their games too closely. So all the characters, apart from Ravi Shastri, of course, uh, all the characters are from 1990 upwards. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, that is about leadership. There are plenty such chapters, uh, even about administration. Um, there, uh, there is Jagmohan Dalmia, uh, who Indian cricket has to be indebted uh, mm-hmm. uh, for, you know, I mean, for the kind of uh, sacrifices that he has made and for the kind of transformation that he brought into Indian cricket as a whole. Uh, uh, back in the day, the World Cup used to be played only in England, 1975, 79 and 83. So it was kind of a monopoly. Um, and Jagmohan Dalmia took over uh, office in 1979. Come 1987, the World Cup was brought to the subcontinent. It was played in India. The Lions were the title sponsors and um, India went to the semifinals as well. Uh, but, but that's besides the point. Um, it came to the subcontinent and after that it went to Australia and New Zealand, back to the subcontinent and then to England and then to South Africa. So every country got a chance to host, including the West Indies and, um, um, you know, so, and South Africa. So um, the point is, Dalmia plays a very, very uh, pivotal role in administration, not only in Indian cricket, to world cricket as well. Mm-hmm. South Africa being reinstated uh, in 92 into international cricket, gaining international status is thanks to Jagmo and Dalmia. So another anecdotal uh, uh, chapter that uh, about administration and uh, also following your dream. When you dream, you really need to dream big. Uh, so... Stuff like these uh, are mentioned in the book. I wouldn't like to go ahead and uh, talk about too many of them because I, no. I, I want my listeners <laughs> to yeah. pick up a copy to themselves. So can yeah. we actually get a glimpse of, you know, what uh, it actually looks like? Maybe, you know, just for our viewers, maybe if you could uh, sort of yeah. finish. So I'm going to share my screen because sure. uh, unfortunately I was supposed to release this on the 29th of March. Uh-huh. But... Uh, with the pandemic, uh, I think um, uh, it's postponed for the next couple of months. So mm-hmm. I myself have a physical copy <laughs> recently. And uh, the, you know, I mean, the marketing and all that was just about to start. But uh, yeah, I don't have a physical copy. So I'm going to be sharing my screen. Sure. And sure. let's take a look at how it looks. It's called Out of the Park. Wow. And, it looks uh, uh, pretty fancy. Yeah? <laughs> Very nicely done. Thanks a lot. The, the publishers are, it's actually called Spotlight by Notion Press. So mm-hmm. uh, Notion Press uh, also is in the endeavor to uh, uh, launch uh, a few thought leaders uh, through this uh, program called Spotlight. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm quite uh, uh, honored to be a part of that as well. Looks pretty fancy, looks pretty interesting and inspiring as well at the same time. Looks like an amalgamation of, you know, uh, our favorite sport cricket and, you know, uh, the storytelling through that and talking about leadership through it. So I think uh, the the viewers could easily relate to, you know, some great leadership lessons through uh, this game of cricket. So this is this looks fantastic and I'm pretty sure this would actually, you know, sell like hotcakes. I'm pretty sure about that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks a lot for those lovely words. Yes. So uh, staying on the point about uh, sports psychology now. So is there anything that you would want to maybe, you know, talk in terms of, you know, how the future of sports in India looks like? I mean, yeah, everybody knows about cricket, but is there anything else where, you know, uh, sports psychology will actually have a lot of relevance and, you know, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, concreteness to actually, you know, come out to the fore? Uh, maybe a sport like uh, swimming, which is not really something which uh, somebody really, you know, sort of embraces in India that easily. So do you think uh, it is necessary that, you know, there's an amalgamation of uh, sports psychology and, uh, you know, marketing the other form of sports other than maybe the regular conventional things like cricket in any way? Um, I would love to believe that um, every other sport has an equal opportunity Mm -hmm. and uh, I will be the first person to um, you know embrace it with arms wide open um, and I, I hope to God that it happens um, having said that uh, just the way I spoke about Jagmohan Dalmia we need an administrator in every sport mm-hmm. who is as passionate to you to put that sport on the world map mm-hmm. 
uh, hockey for a very long time. I think it was the 60s or the 70s. Up until the 70s, it was gaining some uh, amount of traction uh, in India. But uh, like I said, uh, the the fervor, the vigor wasn't there to uh, take the sport uh, to the next level. So we need people um, like that uh, who could work on every single sport, uh, swimming, athletics, um, and and. And the minute people start seeing some traction, some amount of money coming in, tennis and badminton has already taken mm-hmm. off, and I'm pretty sure it's only uh, you know um, it's it's uh, it's on the uh, it's on the rise. Uh, people are actually picking up uh, are actually taking up to tennis and badminton uh, thanks to the Sindhus and the Sanya Mirzas that we have uh, those two sports, the Leander Paces, Mahesh Bhupatis, mm-hmm. etc. Um, well, uh, yes. Uh, so uh, coming back to the point, uh, we need an administrator for every single sport uh, who can actually work with passion to take it to the next level. Sports psychology is something which has to be instilled into people, uh, especially the corporate working professional, because there's so much of pressure uh, that uh, uh, the corporate professional goes through on a day to day basis that uh, it is very easy to wilt. And uh, and I think. Um, by uh, taking a leaf out of real successful sportsman's book, trying to adapt um, um, uh, into the sportsman-like mindset, uh, will uh, you know uh, work uh, wonders for a corporate professional. It could work for everybody, but yes, um, particularly the corporate working professional, entrepreneurs as well, because yeah. uh, people are under tremendous pressure. Um, I am also from the entrepreneurial space, so I can understand um, a, a lot of these guys uh, you know, are under tremendous pressure. They have uh, a double-headed sword. They get the investments and then they got to uh, you know, show them uh, traction. They got to show them profits. Uh, so yes, um, entrepreneurs can also take a lot out of uh, sports psychology. Uh, yeah, so sports plays a very major role. Uh, so the in, uh, takeaway from this book, in a way, can actually help uh, not just, you know, relate to sports, but also from a corporate perspective, uh, you know, it could be from a different field altogether. So you can actually, you know, uh, build a correlation to any field and sort of align that to this book. Is, is that what uh, this book is all about? Exactly. Every single chapter has key takeaways to it as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... Uh, not just being anecdotal, the uh, the anecdotes translates into uh, key takeaways from every chapter, and how you can associate it to your day to day lives. Uh, so that's that's what the book has on offer. Awesome! I can't wait to actually get my hands on this book. So uh, really looking forward to you know this book being released and you know me buying one copy for myself and reading that and coming back to you with my feedback. Yep. Thanks, uh, Kushagra, and I would also like to mention. What you're doing is very, very inspirational. I think it's going to uh, it's going to inspire a lot of people as well. <laughs> Thank you so much, Abhishek. Uh, just one last, uh, you know, thing before we leave. So uh, this is this is always one, uh, you know, regular, you know, sort of a feature within my channel. So I always ask for one success mantra from uh, the person whom I actually, you know, speak to. So is there some success mantra that you would want to maybe share to the audience, you know, as a as a quick takeaway? Um, so, uh, uh, first of all, success is very, uh, individualistic and, um, uh, it is very subjective to, uh, an individual. Having said that the one success mantra that I would like to share is, uh, uh, to stay calm, to practice calmness and to restrict ego. Uh, the more humble you are, uh, the farther you get and, uh, and you got to stay calm throughout. Absolutely. Actually aligns to the kind of situation that we are in. We, we actually, calmness is the need of the hour and everybody should actually, you know, sort of embrace, uh, you know, being calm. Thank you so much, Abhishek, for uh, making some time for us and, you know, sharing your thoughts and insights. And you know, I'm pretty sure the audience here would be left mesmerized by the kind of uh, uh, insights that you've actually, you know, sort of thrown at, uh, thrown at them. So thank you so much and uh, uh, all the best for your, uh, you know, release. And I'm pretty sure, you know, this uh, book will actually, you know, sell like hotcakes like i mentioned it's a pleasure and thank you so much for your good wishes uh, thank you so much thank you thanks a lot bye-bye